I've always felt like this was a little fragile. There's always the opportunity of applying a good deal of leverage and breaking that stuff off. In today's video, we're going to be completely rebuilding my Forge's blown burner and adding some components to the system in order to increase its safety. I've been running this gas intake assembly since 2019 without issues. However, I've always thought that I could make it more robust and its physical location being close to the edges of my forge's doors causes the external temperature of the gas inlet to run hotter than I'd like. In addition, the solenoid, which needs electrical current to stay open, runs pretty hot being next to the doors. I'll also be wiring in a switch in order to increase the overall ability of the system to handle a power outage during forge operation, which I'll give more details on later in the build. Step one is disassembly. All in all, this is fairly simple and there will be some components that we reuse. This blower has been going strong for me since 2006. The wire protection grommet is completely dry rotted, so I figured I'd use some of the extra wire protectors that I ordered off of Amazon for other projects here to beef this up. To get everything fit, I had to remove some of the connectors and replace them. I also had to drill a hole for the grounding wire. With the wiring of the blower completed, I attached a mounting plate for the new switch and outlet. This is a scrap piece of quarter inch plate that came from some old gym equipment and it does a perfect job for this application. So I'm mocking up my forced air burner assembly on the ground here outside of the forge just to make sure I got all the pieces. This is my blower that I bought in around 2006. I'm pretty sure they're not available anymore but there are a lot of good options for blowers on the market now. I have a flange here and then I have some one and a half uh, steel pipe. Now these two are galvanized just because it's all I had on hand, but I would recommend getting all non-galvanized, especially as you get closer to the heat side over here. You don't want to be breathing in galvanized burnt fumes. I have a gate valve. Uh, it's one and a half, one and a half nipple, one and a half elbow, another one and a half nipple. And then this is one of the main things that I'm changing. This is a one and a half T. And if you see here, this is a reducer that brings it from one and a half down to a quarter. And a quarter is what all my gas lines are at. Instead of putting a bunch of different reducers here, and instead of trying to tap into one of these uh, connectors, either an elbow, a reducer, or a T, it's better just to come off the T straight with, uh, with the appropriate size reducer. So I ordered this off of uh, Supply House and uh, it's nice to be able to order exactly what you need. So we're going through the T here, but the air is coming through here, the gas is coming through here. We're going through this one and a half elbow. We have a one and a half close here. It's basically just a short nipple. And then we have a one and a half to one and a quarter reducer. And then this is actually uh, something I made back in the day for this setup in a different forge. I basically put multiple pieces of pipe in here and uh, welded them on top of each other. So there's like three different pieces of pipe and it's actually a pretty small hole, maybe a, a three quarter of an inch hole on the end. That is totally unnecessary. You could have gone straight from one and a half to one and a quarter to a one and a quarter nipple and then cut it off at the length you need. And that would work perfectly fine for a burner. I'm using this because I don't have a one and a quarter nipple and this is what I have. And I think it's gonna work just fine. Slight spoiler alert here, I will be trying different size burner tubes towards the end of the video. This one really didn't hold the flame the way I'd like it to, so stay tuned for that trial and error testing. If y'all were wondering, I ordered this god awfully colored set of cheap pipe wrenches offline because I knew I'd be doing this project and destroyed my last pipe wrench when I turned it into a Damascus billet twister. They got the job done and I was able to get the burner put back together without issues. Okay, so this is part of the assembly that I had before. I took some pieces off here downstream of this needle valve, but the rest of it I'm gonna leave alone. Now, one thing I will note is that I use normal Teflon here. If I was gonna redo this, I would use the propane rated Teflon, the yellow, 
but I'm not going to take this apart because it was all working just fine and I'm going to basically put it on to that quarter inch nipple that I have. Now I have a needle valve here, I have a gauge, this is just so that I have an easier place to read the pressure upstream of this needle valve. I have this solenoid and then I have an adapter flare fitting here so that I can attach it to my propane hose. So I had talked about replacing this solenoid with a motor valve, however the motor valve that I was looking at was not rated for natural gas or propane. After I talked to the manufacturer, they recommended not using it since it was designed for water. That being said, I'm sure it would work just fine in this application, but I didn't feel like messing with it to be honest. It's about 50 bucks that I don't need to spend. And if it's not even rated for gas, uh, I wouldn't want to put it on the channel and have someone else use it and it not work out. So this solenoid was rated for natural gas. They are super cheap. They're not explosion proof. Make sure you use these at your own risk, obviously. And uh, I feel like it is a, a good solution for putting on my propane supply in case the power ever goes out. At least this will shut off my supply. This whole assembly will be further away from the forge. So I think any type of heat issues I would have had in its original orientation will be mitigated. And that being said, I wasn't really having any problems with it. It was just getting a little warmer than I thought it should. So uh, it may not have been an issue to start off with, but by bringing it further away from the forge, I think it will be safer, or at least I think it will last longer before I have to replace this. One other note about my assembly here is that I like to have a needle valve up here in order to control the gas coming into my mixing tube. I like being able to do this standing and not do it on the tank itself. Not to mention the regulators are uh, pretty crude in their adjustment sometimes. So this gives me a lot of control of that gas coming into the mixing tube. So that's why I put a needle valve here. Some people recommend having a shut off ball valve up here, which I think is a great idea. I just didn't do it on this setup. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wire up an outlet here along with a safety shut off switch. And the reason I'm doing this is we were talking on blade forms and Stacy, one of the moderators over there, recommended putting a switch down here so that if the power ever does go out, the switch will also be tripped and the system will not turn back on if the power comes on. So the scenario would be the power goes off, the solenoid shuts the gas, and then the blower's off. If the power came back on, the solenoid would then open up and the blower would turn on, but if there was nothing to ignite it, it would start pumping propane throughout your entire shop. So the safety aspect here is that not only does the solenoid shut in a power outage, but then the power supply for the blower and the solenoid both get permanently shut off and you have to manually reset it in order to turn it back on, even if the power to the building comes back on. So yeah, it's an extra safety step. Is it a little over the top? Probably, but you know, at the end of the day, it's nice to have a safe system, especially if I plan on using this burner assembly for years to come. And that one off time that it could save me from having a catastrophic issue, I feel like it's worth it. So. I'm gonna go ahead and wire in that outlet and the switch. Real quick before I wire that in, I need to extend the gas assembly away from the forge so that it doesn't contact my forge's stand. I ordered this magnetic switch online for about 20 bucks and it seems like it's fairly well constructed. In the description below, I'll put some affiliate links to this switch along with some other items and tools I used in the build. So check those out if you wanna support the channel while buying some of these products off of Amazon. The switch came with a really good wiring diagram and I followed it as outlined. In my case, I'm wiring it up so that the switch energizes an outlet. If you want, you can wire the blower and solenoid directly. However, I felt like it would be easier to replace them in the future with this outlet plug-in setup if one of them ever was to fail. I used some scrapped power cables for this install along with various connectors that I had in my shop's electrical supply. I'll note that this switch's box does get pretty tight and I was forced to change out some of the connectors to have it close properly later off camera.
So to get gas going into the mixing chamber, I turn the regulator on my propane tank on. This is closed still because the power is not on. When I turn the power on, the solenoid will open, allow gas to flow through so that I can read the pressure on this gauge. And then I can also open up this needle valve to allow gas into the mixing chamber. Obviously on the blower side, uh, this big red gate valve will allow me to control the air coming into the chamber from my blower. On the electrical side, we have two things that need electricity. We have the solenoid and we have the blower. Both of them will be plugged in to this outlet that I wired into this switch down here. This switch has a simple on and off, but it also has an emergency shutdown button. This switch will also turn off and stay off if the power to the shop goes out. All right, we just suffered a power outage and my solenoid turned off as well as the blower to the forge. So this is great and this is what the basic setup was before adding this switch. The difference is when I plug this back in and the power is restored to the house, it doesn't turn back on. Now where this scenario could save you is that if I was at the house for some reason not in the shop and I had left the forge, which I rarely ever do, and the power cycles on and off over a 10 or 15 minute period, and the flame will not reignite in the forge. So the gas gets turned back on, the air gets turned back on, and it just pumps propane into my shop. In this scenario, I plug the power back in and the air blower and solenoid did not open, which is probably the safest thing that could happen. And that is why we wired in this switch here. So thank you to Stacy on Blade Forms. Thank you. That is a great idea. While I'm working on this forge, I figured I'd tune up the interior. I've used Mule Team Borax as flux in the past on my Damascus billets, and you can see it was eating through the hard fire brick that I used as a floor. I removed the old floor, threw down some more KO wool, and relined it with some satinite. After letting it dry for a few days, I quickly test fired the forge to burn off any additional moisture, then let it cool completely. To replace the floor in my forge, I'm going to have to cut a hard one inch fire brick, so I ordered this masonry blade for my angle grinder. I was honestly shocked at how well this blade cut through the brick, since I've fought cutting these in the past. I'm not sure if y'all noticed during my test firing, but my flame was pretty grumbly coming out of the forge. Once the forge is heated up and the doors are a little closed, this is a non-issue, but I do like having the flame more held by the burner tube itself to help with early time tuning when I turn on the forge. For this reason, I decided to test out some other solutions for the burner tube starting with a straight piece of one and a quarter pipe. While this was an improvement, I figured I'd also take the time to test out a 1 inch burner tube since this is what I was using previously in my forge. I ordered a 1 and 1 half of an inch to 1 inch reducing T from Supply House and some 1 and 1 half of an inch nipples of different lengths to get everything spaced out appropriately. To get my flame's angle coming into the forge the way I like it, which is slightly towards the back, I needed to add another extension to my gas intake assembly in order to keep the propane tank hose from contacting the forge's stand. I was going to cut a new burner tube out of a one inch nipple, but saw that my old one inch burner tube was around the appropriate length already. So I threaded it into the elbow and stuffed the gaps with some wool. At this point, I like how everything is running, so I'll stick with the one inch tube for now. The gas assembly is much more robust than it was previously, 
the solenoid is further away from the direct heat of the forge, and I was able to add that additional safety feature with the magnetic switch. I hope you all really enjoyed this build, and if you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any other opinions or ideas about my burner assembly, please feel free to drop them in the comments section below. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.